All right, we're back and we're chugging along in video five, I believe. Um, so now that we have SQLize actually installed, I wanted to go over a little bit of what this folder is doing and talk a little bit about what models are. Because if you're not familiar with ORMs, you probably, or you may not know or ever heard of a model before. Or if you're familiar with Mongo, you may be very familiar with what a model is. Um, but this file here is the index file in our models directory. And what it's going to do is it's going to look into the models directory. So first off here, this line of code right here, is what actually connects to the SQLize database. And we're gonna change this a little bit, but this is how you should actually connect. Then we see that we have a file system variable here. So first, this file system is going to read all of the files in this particular directory. And for each of those files, it's going to return A, all the files that don't have a period as the first character. All the files that do have some kind of name. <laughs> um, so what is this base name? Where is that coming from? Base name equals right. So all of the files that do not equal index. We don't want to return index. And then also we're going to only take the files that have JS as an extension. That's it. That's all this is doing. Then for each of those files, we're gonna create a model and we're going to create a property in this SQLize object that is based on the file name. Okay, and then we're going to add said model to a DB object. Okay, <clears throat> once we're done here, we're going to find all of the keys, so all of the names for db and for each of those keys we're going to associate said model with db that's it that's what that's doing finally down here we're going to attach both the sqlize and capitalize sqlize ob uh, object properties to this there's a lot of methods and functions inside of there and then we're going to export db what this file is really doing is it's basically taking all of the models you have and giving you access to them on this DB object. In fact, you really don't have to understand what this section of code is doing. It's magic, ignore it. You shouldn't need to edit this. If you do need to edit this, I would say that you're maybe doing something a little bit wrong or a little bit weird. This, on the other hand, connecting to your database is something you probably will need to edit. If you're following my videos, you will edit this. So what exactly is a model? I'm throwing around this word model, and I'm not really explaining what it is. So let's go back to the SQLize library and talk about what models are. So what is this thing that we call a model? Well, a model is basically a database table, kind of. That definition only goes so far, but it's the easiest, most beginner-friendly way I can have you think of a model. Is It is a database table, or it is a file that describes a database table. So the real quick, let's create um, a model here. So we'll call this model, because we're going to um, have a user table. So we're going to call this model users and right here, we see that we get this new users.js file, right? And then we'll say use strict. And we'll say modules, module.exports equals, ooh. and then we're gonna say SQLize and comma data types. Okay. All right. And then here we're going to say return. Okay. And what are we returning? We're going to return a SQLize function. Okay. So 
here we go. This is how you actually create a model. Um, and it looks something like this. So we write sqlize.define and then our model name. So in our thing, we're going to return a function. And that's why we import, or not import, that's why we call this right here. So sqlize.define. And then we're going to give it a name. Now, this is a little bit particular because how this creates this database table can be a little bit interesting. Um, for one, we're going to say user. Okay, but when this database table actually gets created, it'll be called users. It will pluralize this. Um, you just have, it's kind of one of those things you have to accept. Sometimes I've actually run into a couple table names that SQLize doesn't really know how to pluralize or isn't good at. Um, and especially when you mix it with underscores. Um, so we'll talk about that in one second. The second argument is an object. And this object is what's going to actually describe the table. So if we go back into this, we see that we have this object and we have column A, and then we have column B, and we have column C. And the reason that they're saying columns is because that these top level object properties are really like columns. Okay. So we see here that we have an ID, a first name, last name, email, username, and password. So we're going to say ID, and I'm just going to write these like this for a second. Uh, first name, username, or sorry, last name, username, email, or well, password. and email. Okay, so this means that these are going to be the columns in my table. Now I'm actually going to include a third object and I don't think they describe it here. So let's look at this because there is actually a third object that the define can take. No. So define takes a model name, and we see that here, the different attributes, so that's basically the columns, and then finally, and this one is optional, it takes things that will um, define how these columns are actually, or how this model is actually created, and how it can be used. So the first thing we're going to cr put in this is an object. And in this object, we're going to write a couple things. First, we're going to write underscored true. We want this to be called, but we've kind of, we've written this as first underscore name. There is one thing, though, that SQLize is going to create for us, and it's a created at column. And this created at column is something we don't explicitly say. It will create it for us, and we don't want it to be created at with no underscore and A as a capital A. So we don't want it to look like this. We want it to be created like this. And telling SQLize this is going to make sure that anything that it creates automatically is created as underscore. If you want it to be created camel case, don't include this. The next thing we're going to include is paranoid equals true. And what does this do? Well, let's create two last fields up here. So first I'm going to create updated at and deleted at. Users are kind of a sensitive thing in databases, right? We really don't want to create a user and then accidentally delete them um, because sometimes that can cause massive repercussions throughout a database. Uh, 
while it's definitely good to have the ability to delete details from a user, sometimes a user's ID has been put in so many other tables that you really don't want to ever delete it because you could cause issues. So instead, we're going to do this paranoid thing here, which means that the database will not actually delete a user entry if we tell it to delete it. Instead, it'll just update this deleted at to whatever date you deleted that entry at. The only difference about this is that with this, you do have to make sure you have something in place that can kind of nullify and clear out a user's entry. So if you save personal data with your specific user, like we're saving their first name and their last name, right? And if they come to you and say, I want to be deleted from this system completely, I do not want you to remember any personal information about me, you do have to have a way to go into this entry and delete their first name, their last name, their email, such and such, because this actual entry won't be deleted. And this can be really good for companies that are trying to gather data, but maybe anonymize it, um, because it'll keep the ID, it'll keep all the data, it will just get rid of any personal information. But remember, you gotta write that function that does that. Okay. So now let's talk about what these are actually going to be set. I'm only going to do a couple of them, and then I'm just going to roll through the rest. So first, we can look at SQLize. And if we go into seventeen minutes, okay, if we go into data types, we can see all the different ways that we can actually define things. So we have strings, text, integers, big ints, floats, doubles, the standard things. We also have JSON, blob, yada yada. For the ID, we want to use a SQLize UU ID. We don't really want to do something. We could do an integer. Um, personally, I feel like that will bite us in the butt. So I'm going to use a, a UU ID for the users. So I'm going to say uh, an ID has a type and then data types. We brought this in right up here. So data types dot UU ID. Then I'm going to say that this needs to be the primary key. Next, we have a first name. So we're going to say type data types dot string because it's going to be a string and then we're going to give it a couple of validation checks so first off uh you should not be putting special characters in your name right so we're actually going to say alpha mm, can't remember what it is so We'll do model definition, validations, and we're going to say it is, is alphanumeric. All right, so we would say is alphanumeric true, because they shouldn't be putting special characters in their name. No one has special characters in your name. Uh, we will allow them to do that in the last name, but not the first name. And the reason you would let them do that in the last name is because some people have hyphenated last names. Finally, we'll say required true, allow, null, false. So, oh, true, sorry, allow, null, true. So what does this all mean? Well, this means that you cannot try to create an entry without giving it your first name. It's not allowed. This we set to true because we do want to allow the first name to be null. Why? Well, because of what I just said. We eventually are going to have to write a function that lets us delete all of the information in 
the user entry without deleting the actual user entry or its ID, which means that sometime down the line, this field for someone is going to have to be null. So here we're going to do almost the exact same thing, which means I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to get rid of this is alphanumeric so that people can have hyphenated last names. Next, username. This can be a little bit interesting. So first we want to say type, so data type dot string. And then we're going to look at some of the different validation that we can put on this. Now, of course, this is all up to you, but there's a whole lot of different validation that we can do. I'm not going to go through all of these. The first I want to do is min, or sorry, not min, length. Where is length? So length, 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 length right here. Uh, we don't want someone creating a thousand length or a thousand character username. Uh, we don't also don't want someone creating a two character username. So we want to verify how long or how short this username is. Okay. So we'll go back into here and we're going to say that we want to make sure that this is required. We do want to allow it to be null. And then we want to say len, and this is really up to you, but I'm going to say has to be longer than eight characters, can't be longer than 20. All right, same thing for password. So I'm just going to copy this right into password. This does not invalidate actual checking. Let's make that very clear. This will throw an error if one of these validations isn't met, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be checking on the API access route that they've done this. For the email, we're going to write all of the same things, except we're also going to include this validation. Where is it? Is email right up here. So this is going to make sure that it's an actual email. So we'll say is email. All right, and then let's do one thing here real quick. So this could be an email. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we want to make sure that this is at least seven characters long. And we'll say 100 characters. If you're getting emails that are greater than 100 characters, it's likely that whoever that email belongs to is not human, and you should probably just reject them outright. That's likely a machine. All right, updated at and deleted at are both times. So for these, we'll just say data type dot date. Date time. All right. Oop, type. And that's good. We could actually run this now and we'll, we're going to run it in a second and we'll actually get a table that shows up. But first we have to connect to the database, but you can see how this actually describes a database table. All right. Let's be done here, and I will see you in the next video.